two days after the catastrophic collapse of a critical dam in southern Ukraine, rescue efforts continue, with dramatic scenes like this taking place as the scope of the devastation becomes increasingly clear as each hour passes. But it's not just rising waters posing a challenge to residents in Kherson, homelessness, uh, the threat of disease, and floating landmines are all adding to the increased safety risk. In addition to the fighting, Ukrainian officials are accusing Russian forces of shelling evacuation areas and injuring nine civilians, one, by the way, critically. Vladimir Zelensky visited the region earlier, and he called for a clear and quick global response to the disaster. Meantime, U.S. officials tell CNN that Ukrainian forces are being met with stiff resistance as they try to break through Russian lines in the eastern part of the country. CNN's Sam Kiley joins us live now from Kyiv. So the fact that Ukrainian soldiers are being met with stiff, stiff resistance, Sam, what does that tell us about the pending counteroffensive and how hard it will be? I don't think it tells us anything, Zane, at all. Uh, obviously, they're going to be met with stiff resistance. This is a war. But I think that the important uh, news is the twofold. First of all, that there have been these probing attacks along the front line in Zaporizhia, which has involved uh, Ukrainian troops that have been using some of the NATO supplied equipment. Now, this was always going to be an extremely well defended front line. And a lot of the evidence, particularly on social media, is that the Ukrainian troops are meeting resistance in that area. At the same time, though, they are now reporting some significant advances over three and a half kilometers, uh, albeit down a fairly narrow corridor south of the city of Bakhmut. Then are those advances being uh, reported by uh, Ukraine's third assault brigade. And this is what some of it looked like. Ukraine's third assault brigade is in action near Bakhmut. And they claim they're making advances around the city. But their attack is dependent on Soviet-era weapons. Modern equipment from the USA and NATO is apparently being held in reserve for a Ukrainian offensive. Do you have a name for your grad? Is it good enough for this fight? Ukraine gets no help at all with aircraft. Not so far. This Soviet-era helicopter is ancient, but in combat almost every day. flying dangerously low to avoid missiles and Russian jet hunter killers. These aircraft will fly more sorties as fighting intensifies in a relentless cycle of war. Ukraine has now got added rage at what it's calling a Russian ecocide. This part of Kherson has suffered Russian bombardment across the river for months, now near total destruction from upriver. Russia is widely blamed for the collapse of the dam at Novokakovka, which has been under its control since March last year. Civilians who survived the Russian occupation of their town and an offensive to free it are now facing down a new horror. Thousands have no drinking water. Here, a drone delivers help, an adaptation of a system originally designed not to save life, but to take it. Now, Dane, uh, amidst all of this, of course, there's endless speculation about whether or not Ukraine has begun its uh, planned counteroffensive. I think the uh, efforts where they've seen a resistance near Zaporizhia, these uh, attacks that we've seen coming south from Bakhmut, and indeed the raids into Russia itself, are all part of the ongoing uh, shaping operations. And earlier on today, I actually sent a text message to uh, Minister Reznikov, the defence minister him here, saying, has your offensive started? And he sent back a message saying, no, our counteroffensive started on the 24th of February 2022, which, of course, is the day that Russia invaded Ukraine. Zane? Right. Sam Kiley, thank you so much. Ukrainian officials reporting that at least nine people have been injured as Russian forces target evacuations in Kherson. Both Moscow and Kyiv accuse each other of shelling 
as rescuers rush to help people escape the flooding from a dam collapse earlier this week. One apparent attack erupting as Ukraine's chief rabbi was talking about the evacuation efforts. And the Russian... The rabbi hitting the ground to take cover. Soldiers are heard yelling to get down as they move to a safer spot. Well, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visiting the region and meeting with aid workers today. Meantime, Kremlin officials say Russian forces have repelled four Ukrainian attacks in the southern Zaporizhia area. Now, CNN cannot independently verify those claims. Meantime, two U.S. senior U.S. officials tell CNN that Ukrainian forces are taking significant losses on both sides of this. Ukraine's deputy defense minister reporting battle gains around the eastern city of Bakhmut. She says it's still the epicenter of hostilities, but CNN has learned that the Russians have put up stiff resistance with minefields that have taken a heavy toll on Ukrainian armored vehicles. CNN's Sam Kiley has more. Ukraine's 3rd Assault Brigade is in action near Bakhmut. And they claim they're making advances around the city. But their attack is dependent on Soviet-era weapons. Modern equipment from the USA and NATO is apparently being held in reserve for a Ukrainian offensive. Do you have a name for your grad? Is it good enough for this fight? Ukraine gets no help at all with aircraft, not so far. This Soviet-era helicopter is ancient, but in combat almost every day. Flying dangerously low to avoid missiles and Russian jet hunter killers. These aircraft will fly more sorties as fighting intensifies in a relentless cycle of war. Ukraine has now got added rage at what it's calling a Russian ecocide. This part of Kherson has suffered Russian bombardment across the river for months, now near total destruction from upriver. Russia is widely blamed for the collapse of the dam at Novokakovka, which has been under its control since March last year. Civilians who survived the Russian occupation of their town and an offensive to free it are now facing down a new horror. Thousands have no drinking water. Here, a drone delivers help an adaptation of a system originally designed not to save life, but to take it. Sam Kiley, CNN in eastern Ukraine. Well, in all of this and despite sanctions, Russia's trade with China just saw a huge increase. According to Chinese customs data that's just been released, trade between the two countries in the first five months of the year jumped more than 40% compared to last year, hitting that big number, $94 billion. China's uh, relationship, of course, with uh, Russia has been an economic lifeline for Moscow under heavy sanctions. But the Asian powerhouse's trade with several other countries taking a hit with Taiwan, South Korea and the United States experiencing the biggest dips.